Listen, my friends, I have an important story I wish to share with you. It teaches an important lesson about how we must treat others in life. It is the story of a very rich man and a poor beggar named Lazarus. You see, this rich man was very rich indeed. All his life, he had lots of money and enjoyed all the finest things life has to offer. He ate the most delicious food, wore fine jewelry of gold, silver, and diamonds. Even though purple dye is very expensive and normally only worn by royalty or very important people, this rich man didn't care and spent lots of money so he could wear the fanciest purple clothes. He had a giant mansion, by far the biggest in town. He used it to throw big, fancy dinners with lots of exotic food and held spectacular parties for all his friends. Never did this rich man spare a thought before he spent any money. The rich man had everything he could have ever asked for in life, and everyone was very jealous of the luxury he enjoyed. But not everyone in the city was as fortunate as he was. Just outside the magnificent mansion owned by the rich man, there lived a poor beggar named Lazarus. His life was full of pain and suffering, and he had not a single possession to his name. All he wore were torn rags, as he had no money to buy clothes. Living on the street made him sick and his body was covered in painful sores that never seemed to heal. He lived among the wild street dogs who would come up to him and lick the sores on his body. Whenever Lazarus did find food, the street dogs would fight him for it, making him even hungrier and even weaker than he already was. I am so hungry, and I feel so weak. I have done everything I can to try and live a good life, and yet here I am. If only someone would take pity on me and spare me just a scrap of food. As Lazarus lived and begged at the East Gate, just outside the mansion of the wealthy man, Lazarus would sit and watch all day as deliveries of fine food, jewelry, and other treasures arrived at the rich man's house. Look at all these fine gifts that pass in and out of these rich homes each and every day. Oh, if only I could taste even a bite of the fine foods that they must be eating. Lazarus was so hungry that he dreamed of eating just a single crumb from the rich man's food. As he would leave to go about his business in the city, the rich man would pass Lazarus at his front gate. Lazarus would see the wealth of the rich man and beg him even just for some crumbs. Please, sir, could you spare me just a scrap of food? I'm so very hungry. 
But the rich man did not care. Every day, he ignored the pleas of poor Lazarus and continued to enjoy his life of luxury without a care in the world. Even though they pass me every day, not once have the people from these fine houses even looked in my direction. My hunger and suffering means nothing to them, even though we are practically neighbors and we are both children of God. One night, his life of poverty reached its end. Lazarus died, and his spirit left his body. On the very same night, the rich man also happened to die. Finally, Lazarus's many years of suffering had come to an end. His spirit arrived at the gates of heaven and was greeted by Abraham himself to live in eternal bliss. Where am I? Who are you? Welcome, my son, as you have arrived at the gates of heaven. I am Abraham. I am one of your ancestors and the first of God's chosen people. But as Lazarus was welcomed by Abraham at the gates of heaven, the rich man found himself in the pits of hell, surrounded by fire and suffering. The rich man watched as Lazarus entered paradise and called out to his ancestor Abraham for help from the flames. Please, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Allow Lazarus to dip his finger in water and come down here and cool my tongue. These flames are so hot, I am here in agony and wish to cool down. But Abraham could not help the rich man. My son, do you not remember when you had all of the finest things in life and poor Lazarus here had nothing at all to his name? He suffered each and every day, while you lived in total luxury. He lived just outside of your doorstep, and you had plenty to spare. Yet did you ever stop to help poor Lazarus through his suffering when you could? No, you didn't, and so now you can never cross the great gulf between us. The gap between heaven and hell is too great, and you must live a good life to enjoy the kingdom of heaven once you reach the afterlife. The rich man realized how he had misused his life of luxury and began to fear for his family. Then please, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to the house of my father. If Lazarus speaks to them, maybe he can convince them to change their ways and live more virtuous lives so they may live forever in the kingdom of heaven. But again, Abraham could not grant the rich man what he asked for. Alas, my son, your father and brothers already have the word of Moses and all of the other prophets before them to offer them this very message, and yet they have not listened. But if they see Lazarus rise from the dead to give them this message, then they will be sure to listen and change their ways. But Abraham explained to the rich man my son, if they do not listen to Moses, if they do not listen to the prophets, then one man rising from the dead will surely not make them listen. And so Abraham left the rich man to face his fate and joined Lazarus again in the kingdom of heaven. And so, that is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. In the afterlife, 
the rich man found himself with nothing but suffering, while Lazarus enjoys an eternity of comfort and satisfaction. Let's discuss what we can learn from what happened to them. Even though the rich man had every privilege in life, he shared no respect for God or care for his fellow man Lazarus. Yes, once we die, we can no longer rely on the material goods of life to bring us comfort and happiness. Only by living a good life and caring for our fellow man can we make sure that we live forever in peace in the kingdom of heaven. In Bethany, there lived two sisters, Mary and Martha, with their brother, Lazarus. They all adored Jesus, and Jesus was very fond of them also. One day, while Jesus was visiting them, Martha was busy cleaning the house and preparing food. She wanted to be sure that Jesus was well taken care of. Instead of helping her sister, Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to him speak. The harder Martha worked, the more upset she was looking at her sister. There were many others who were also sitting with Mary while Martha was preparing a meal. Finally, Martha complained. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Please tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. When he said this, Jesus was ignoring the traditional role of women and encouraging Mary to think and learn. He did not say that Martha's role of service was unimportant. What he did say was that being a disciple and learning about the ideas he was explaining was even more important. One day, Lazarus, their brother, fell ill. Mary and Martha were worried. Their brother was sick, very sick. The sisters knew Lazarus might die soon, so they immediately sent a message to Jesus. Jesus was preaching in Jerusalem when he got the message. Master, there is a message from Bethany. Mary and Martha want to meet you urgently. Mary and Martha? Yes, Master. Do you know them? Of course I know them. How can I forget sweet Mary, who washed my feet with perfume and then wiped them with her hair? I wonder, what could be the matter that she wishes to see me so urgently? The message says that your dear friend Lazarus is very ill and might die. Hmm. Lazarus is ill, is he? But he will not die because of the illness. In fact, this illness will demonstrate to the people the glory of God. Jesus did not go to see his friends for the next two days, and after two days told his disciples, Come, it is now time to go to Bethany. My friend Lazarus is sleeping, and I have to go and wake him up. Are you sure you want to go back there, Master? Have you forgotten that not too long ago the Jews there were ready to stone you to death? If Lazarus is sleeping, he will soon wake up. Why do you have to go there? Don't worry. People realize their mistakes at some time or the other. And you have not understood what I meant. When I said Lazarus is sleeping, I meant that he is dead. If he is already dead, then why do you want to risk your life and go there, my lord? I have told you, this is an opportunity for everyone to see the glory of God when I go to Bethany to wake up Lazarus. 
The disciples were all confused. They just couldn't understand what Jesus was trying to say. However, they did not question him any further and accompanied him to Bethany, which was very close to Jerusalem. On hearing of Lazarus' death, several Jews from Jerusalem had come to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary to comfort them. When news of the arrival of Jesus became known, Martha rushed there to meet him, leaving Mary at home. Ah, my dear Martha, I am happy to see you after so long. Oh, Jesus, we sent word to you to come here quickly. If you had come sooner, Lazarus would not have died. But I still have faith and hope in you. I know that if you ask, God will grant your wish. Calm down, Martha. Please, calm down. Have faith in me and God. Your brother shall soon be alive and with you. Oh, I know that. He will come alive when everyone else will, which will be on the last day. No, Martha. Your brother will become alive now. What do you mean, Master? He has been dead and in the tomb for four days now. Jesus looked at Martha calmly and placed his hand on her shoulder. Look at me, Martha, and tell me, do you not have faith in me and in God? Martha held Jesus' hand, looked up at him, and said, My Lord, how can you even doubt my faith in you? I trust you with my whole being. Well then, let's go and see Mary. Where is she? I'm sure she will be waiting anxiously. She is at home, my Lord. Come, let's go there. I want to meet Mary also. So Jesus, accompanied by Martha and his disciples, went to Martha and Mary's home. As soon as Mary saw him, she rushed up to him and repeated what Martha had said. Oh, Lord Jesus, why did you not come as soon as we sent word to you? If you had, our brother would be alive today. Jesus embraced her and told her what he had told Martha. Trust me and God, and Lazarus shall soon be alive and with you. Mary was as surprised as Martha had been when she heard this. Their brother had been dead and buried for four days. How could he become alive? But she did not say anything as her faith in Jesus was also very strong. Come, lead me to where my friend Lazarus sleeps. Everyone was very curious. They all knew Lazarus had died, so how could he become alive again? So along with Jesus and his disciples, Mary and Martha, a lot of other people marched towards the cave where Lazarus had been buried. On reaching there, Jesus saw that the mouth of the cave had been covered with a big stone. This boulder has to be moved so that Lazarus can walk out. The people were all amazed. No one had ever witnessed a dead person become alive again. They looked at each other, wondering what was going to happen. My Lord, it has been four whole days since our dear brother was buried. His body will be smelling very badly by now. Mary, you say you have total faith and trust in me. Then why do you keep doubting me? Er, no, no, my lord. Please don't mistake me. I do trust you. Well, then, get someone to move that big stone from the entrance of the cave. A few people came forward and pushed the heavy stone away from the entrance to the cave. Some of the people immediately covered their noses with cloth, expecting a dirty smell from the decaying body. However, Jesus' disciples and those who believed in him slowly moved forward. Jesus went up to the cave and called out, Lazarus, come out, my dear friend. Look, your sisters have come to receive you. Everyone stood in shocked silence as a figure, draped in white strips, came to the mouth of the cave. 
Ah, my friend Lazarus. So you have woken up. There was stunned disbelief on the faces of the people gathered around who were witnessing this remarkable miracle performed by Jesus. Martha and Mary had tears of happiness running down their faces. They rushed forward to embrace their dear brother. Lazarus then went and fell at Jesus' feet. My master, you came, you came. How could I have not come to you, my friend? Lord Jesus, you are truly the Messiah, the Son of God. The people who witnessed Lazarus come to life fell at the feet of Jesus also. There was no doubt now in anyone's mind that Jesus was indeed their Savior.